Hello, bro stuff here, and uh, we're just going to give it a minute for Facebook to reach out to everybody, and and then I'll get started on the information. Uh, welcome to Prophecy Insights with Bro Stuff. I am Bro Stuff, and uh, today we're going to talk about. Uh, we're just going to. I'm really going to update you on some of the news stories that have been floating around and after watching numerous videos reading numerous news reports i've kind of assembled what i think are some of the most important stories that we need to pay attention to I'm going to talk a little bit about north korea I'm going to talk a little bit about uh Iran and the EU, Israel, our churches in America and what's going on with our churches. Uh, so we're just going to kind of cover the gamut uh, for a few minutes and hopefully you'll have a better feel for what's going on around you in the Bible prophecy world. And we're going to connect scripture to the news reports so that it all makes sense. And it hopefully provides you a perspective on how to look at what's going on around us all. No doubt, and let me say this before I go any further, no doubt we're living in a very concerning times. I mean, there's a lot for us to be concerned about. Uh, you know, I'm 61, and I don't remember in my lifetime, uh, other than I remember in first grade, back in the early 60s, we were taught to duck and cover, get under our desks, uh, because it was always that Cold War concern that maybe Russia was going to bomb us. But other than that, and we always had, you know, as kids, we always had the feeling that that wasn't going to happen. It was just fun to do the drill because you didn't have to focus on schoolwork for that half hour or hour. But now we've got multiple th uh, threats that we have to be concerned with. We have Iran. We have North Korea now has become a viable threat to the United States. Uh, we've got um, war that's happening on the northwestern border of Israel. How, why does that affect us? Because uh, should Israel get attacked, eventually the whole world is going to get sucked in to the Middle East into a major, major war. And then we all know the end of the story. The Lord Jesus comes out of heaven fights that that war on behalf of Israel and ends it really rather quickly. So, uh, oh, hi, Aletha. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get started. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I'm going to be reading from notes, and I'm going to read uh, some articles that I think are going to really be important for you. I will post everything that I read from, today is going to be from Depka file. Everything that I read, I'll post to the comments on this report, so you'll have access to it. So, number one, North Korea is threatening to bomb L.A., New York, Florida um, with a nuclear bombardment. Now, a lot of people are kind of going, yeah, right. Like, that's really going to happen. But do not, do not take this lightly. Don't think that Russia's just run by some crazy guy or uh, not Russia, North Korea, and that this guy's never going to uh, push a button. The guy that's running North Korea 
though he may be a maniac, he's not stupid. And um, if anyone in this world is going to push that red button, it'll be this guy. Now, look at this article. Uh, I'm going to read some of this to you. This comes out of Depka file. North Korea at nuclear threshold. What about Iran? You know, as we've been focusing now on North Korea, Iran is building up their nuclear arsenal as well. The article uh, will talk a little bit about this. In a white paper published last week, the Japanese Defense Ministry concluded that there is evidence that North Korea had achieved, now get this, this is really, really important, had achieved miniaturization of nuclear weapons, meaning that it could build nuclear warhead small enough to fit onto an ICBM, or intercontinental ballistic missile. North Korea's development of ballistic missiles and its nuclear program are becoming increasingly real and presenting imminent problems for the Asian Pacific region, including Japan as well as the rest of the world, said the Japanese report. The report caused more shock than it should have when it finally reached the world media on Tuesday, August 8th, because their U.S. intelligence sources were fully aware of what was going on for some time. They are now reporting that there may be as many as 60 nukes in the North Korean arsenal. Six zero, folks. Not one, not two, not five, but 60. It was time to take seriously Kim's threat Monday of physical action in response to the sweeping sanctions the UN Security Council passed in punishment of Pyongyang's nuclear and missile programs. You'll remember President Trump, through the ambassador Nikki Haley, uh, froze a billion dollars of North Korea's funds. But something interesting happened. This is what I mean. This guy's very smart. The guy, Little Kim, I call him, Little Kim in North Korea, smart dude. What does he do? Trump freezes a billion dollars. He goes to Iran and says, look, I'll sell you our nuclear technology. And he sets up an agreement with Iran, and Iran is now buying their nuclear technology. And Iran now has the capability to put nuclear weapons on their ICBMs. And see, that's how the world works, folks. You stop them in one end, and they just go to another crazy country, make an agreement, uh, help that country get nuclear weapons, and Kim brings in billions of dollars to override what President Trump did to him. Um, here's an article on, on that that might be, this will interest you. North Korea reportedly mounts anti-ship cruise missiles on fast boats. Now, you remember back that Iran was using fast boats to harass American naval destroyers. Well, listen to this. U.S. intelligence sources reported Tuesday that North Koreans had mounted anti-ship cruise missiles on fast boats, indicating that Pyongyang is preparing for an early test launch of the storm pedal missile from boats anchored at the Tijodong port on its eastern coast. Depka's military sources add the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Navy practiced launching identical cruise missiles last May from their submarines. So here we have Iran, North Korea working together to develop technology where they're going to be able to launch cruise missiles from boats that 
travel very quickly from place to place. And they're also working on launching, if you can believe this, launching nuclear ICBMs from moving platforms out in the ocean. Look, all North Korea has to do is get a, a, a seaworthy vessel, put their launch capability on this vessel, and put it within 250 miles of the west coast of the United States. They could launch an ICBM, multiple ICBMs, and, and give us a real run for our money uh, to try to knock those out of the sky. We have the technology to destroy ICBMs as they're going through the atmosphere. But if they have 60 nuclear ICBMs and they were to launch a barrage of 10 or so or 20 or 30 from East Coast, West Coast into Central America, it just takes one to get through. Just one. And that's the problem with North Korea and Iran. Uh, North Korea and Iran will work in tandem to create problems for the United States and for the European continent. That's what's in play right now. Now, uh, to continue with this first article I was reading, U.S. intelligence also estimates that the recent tests that North Korea is likely to be able to launch interballistic missiles by next year, so America now faces a ruthless, unpredictable dictator who will soon be capable of launching a nuclear attack on its mainland. This threat confronts President Trump with scary test, with a scary test. But while all eyes were fixed on the burly dictator in Pyongyang, hardly anyone noticed that North Korea and Iran this week signed a series of new military accords, which are no less dangerous to world peace. Parliament Speaker Kim Jong-nam, who is rated number two in the Kim regime, ended a 10-day visit to Tehran on Monday, August 7th, by inking the new agreements. His official errand in Tehran was to represent Pyongyang at the swearing-in ceremony of President ha ha Hassan uh, Rouhani and inaugurate the new North Korean embassy building in Ar the Iranian capital. So these two countries are fully in sync with one another right now. And then, you know, we can read uh, Revelation chapter 16. Uh, there's a statement in there uh, around verse 6, I believe it is. A uh, statement in there where the kings of the east, toward the end of the great tribulation, the kings of the east are going to march on Israel. Kings of the East would be China, the Korean Peninsula, and uh, the, the other Asian countries are going to group together with all the other nations of the world. And they're going to eventually, all of this is moving toward the final ultimate war that ends up in the Jezreel Valley, the Valley of Megiddo in Israel. And that's when Yeshua, Jesus, comes out of heaven, destroys them all. That's what br helps bring the second coming of Christ to this world, is he comes to save his land and his people and to stop the madness. And the way the Lord put it in Matthew 24, he said if if the or it might even be in Luke. Uh, just check me out there. Luke, it's either Matthew 24 or Luke 21. I'm doing this just off the top of my head as far as the scripture reference. But he said that the Lord said that if the times weren't shortened, 
All flesh would be wiped out. That's how severe the world is going to be. It's going to be locked in a death spiral that only God is going to be able to stop it. And that's why Jesus comes as well. He comes to stop the whole world from destroying itself. We're marching down that road right now. That's what's going on. Next. One update on this, BB Netanyahu is possibly going to be indicted on uh, on uh, fraud, fraud and bi br uh, bribery charges. Um, that is putting the peace process that President Trump wanted into jeopardy. Uh, for all uh, all intents purposes, the peace process is now on hold because Trump is fighting his own war with that Russian probe going on. Uh, right now, grand jury has been assembled, and uh, they're, they're really going after this Russia uh, collusion very seriously, Mueller is. And so now there's a grand jury. There's going to be people called to testify. It's going to get ugly before it gets better. And the ultimate aim is that the progressive left wants Trump out of office, either to get him to resign or to find grounds to impeach him. That's what all this is really about. So now Bibi Netanyahu is facing the same thing. Trump is dealing with this on the American side. So the peace process is on hold. Now you'll remember that I said a cup, about a month and a half ago, I said, this is called the Middle East dance. This is what I call it. Every, everyone starts talking peace in the Middle East. Christians get all excited because they think, oh, it's arrived. The, the time for the Lord's return is here because peace is going to finally hit the Middle East. And I come on the air and I tell everybody, calm down. I've been watching this since 1987. It's called the Middle East Peace Dance. Things in the Middle East, and in Israel specifically, change on a dime. There could be talk of peace today, and it's over, and no peace talks tomorrow. That's just how it works in the Middle East. Now, here's what I think is going on, and I want to offer this up to you for your thoughts and for, for you to run it through your metal computer and put it through your spiritual filter and see what you think. What I think is going on with the, the peace process, uh, these indictments against BB and against Trump, I feel like the Lord is trying to send a warning to the United States and to Israel not to go through with the peace with a peace agreement, and here's why. Isaiah 28 calls it the contract of death. If Israel signs a peace with the Palestinians, they're guaranteed, guaranteeing their own agony. Because God said in Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, that he goes to war with the nations because you've divided up my land. And if a peace is signed, Israel's going to have to divide Jerusalem into east and west. Then they're going to have to make land swap concessions, in essence, divvying up the land of Israel. God is going to become angry and war will ensue. So I think that the Lord, is, even though God knows the future and it's been prophesied, he still will warn his people and give them a chance to obey him and to stop the madness. And I believe with Trump's problems, with Bibi's problems, and now the peace process is put on hold, I believe God's trying to shoot up flares to the Jewish people and say, don't do it. Don't do it. God always warns you not to do something 
before you do it. I mean, have you had that happen in your own life? Just think back to your own life. When you knew in your heart, I shouldn't do this. You do it, and then all kinds of bad consequences follow. And you, you wake up one day and you go, why didn't I listen to the Lord? Why didn't I listen to that voice in my heart that said, don't do it? Well, that's what God's doing with Israel right now. Even though he knows what they're going to do, he's telling them, don't do it. Don't sign a peace. Don't give away the land. Don't do it. Well, they're going to do it. We know what's going to happen. A man with the plan, the Antichrist, is going to come to power. And everyone's crying out for leadership right now in the world. That's another thing we have to talk about very quickly is around the globe, everyone's saying we need leadership. We've got to have someone lead us out of this mess. Well, the man with the plan, the Antichrist, will come to power. We don't know exactly when, but we know it's going to happen. And he is going to get a peace deal signed. The contract of death, Isaiah 28. Israel's going to sign it. The Arabs are going to sign it. And that's going to be the undoing of all of them. Ultimately, the War of Armageddon, Revelation chapter 19, is going to happen. And Jesus will have to come back to stop it all. So, let's move on. Um, Europe. Europe continues descending into the Islamization of Europe. Europe is being taken over by Sharia law. In fact, uh, in London, the London mayor, the mayor of London is an uh, Islamist. He's a Muslim, but he's a devout, uh, traditional Muslim. And is pushing Sharia law. I, I mean, now they've got two systems of prudence uh, jurists in England. They have the the English court system and the Sharia law court system. If that's not enough to drive you out of your mind. But that's what they're doing in England. It's dividing the country in, in two and splitting it. And Sharia law and the Islamization of England is underway right now, of Great Britain. It's going to get worse. And uh, so that's a scary thought. And they're trying to do it here. Thank God that so far we've been able to, to stop it and not let that take hold here in the United States. Although there's a big push in parts of Minnesota right now for Sharia law because Minnesota, I mean, there's a whole area in Minnesota that's, I mean, people in Minnesota who are not Muslim will not even go into this area uh, out of fear of uh, being harmed. Uh, so there are areas in Minnesota that are totally given over uh, to the Islamic control in a matter of speaking. So that's something to watch and to be aware of. And then our churches, finally, I wanted to report on what's going on with our churches and the social justice movement. The social justice movement is simply a charade to say, we don't want to stand with Israel anymore. The newest, the newest church group to say Israel is to blame for all the Palestinian problems is the Assemblies of God. In fact, in, in about ten, uh, less than 10 days, the Assembly of Gods are going to vote on resolution number three, which really says that uh, we will no longer stand with Israel. I posted that in my group uh, at facebook.com 
uh, forward slash groups forward slash bro Steph. That's uh, posted there. All the information on what the Assembly of Gods is doing and their sharp turn away from Israel and the support of Israel um, is very disconcerting, uh, very sad to see that they're the latest in the social justice folks that are moving away from Israel and moving away, in my opinion, from Scripture. Um, scripture is clear. If you don't bless Israel, you'll be cursed. I mean, it's it's just so clear in in Scripture. I mean, look, 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 let's look at another one. The God they say they serve. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua, his Jewish name. They serve a Jewish God, the Messiah that, that they say died for their sins is Jewish. He didn't stop being Jewish because he went to heaven. He says Jewish up there in heaven as he was when he was here. He didn't stop being a Jew. And and they're going to stand against the Jews in Israel? And they say they worship and love the God of Israel, Jesus? I don't get it. it it's anathema to me. It, it blows my mind. I, I can't understand how anyone that says they love Jesus Christ can take that position. Someone please explain it to me, because I don't get it. And I mean that. If you have a good explanation as to why this happens, other than what we all know biblically is prophesied that, that this would take place, if you have a good explanation, please share it with me. I'm, I want to know how you can disassociate with the Jews in Israel if you say you love the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's in full swing right now in America. Our churches are turning against the gospel, against the truth contained in Scripture. We have to be aware of it. We have to uh, tell people about it, share, uh, uh, warn people to be careful. The churches that they are worshiping in are full of replacement theology now and it's it's very scary so that's the update um i wanted to read you this comes from uh thessalonians chapter five uh but concerning the times and the seasons brethren you have no need that i should write to you for you yourselves Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of the light, sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, helmet of hope, of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, based on everything I just read, comfort each other, edify one another, just as you also are doing. That's right, my beloved, my brothers and sisters, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and you claim him as your Savior and Lord and you have yielded yourself 
to him and surrender to him. You are not appointed to wrath. The wrath of God has passed over you. Just like the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, and they put the blood on the, the doorposts and the top of the door frame. And if, if you draw it out, it makes a cross. When they applied that blood, whoever was in that house, yes, even the Egyptians could have come into that house under the covering of that blood, and they would have been saved, spared what happened to the Pharaoh, the firstborn in Egypt, all through Egypt being killed. So likewise, if we're in Christ, his blood is covering us, and the wrath of God will pass over us, just like God's judgment and wrath passed over the children of Israel of Israel and Egypt, so the wrath of God will pass over us. What a great promise. And we should be excited about that. The wrath of God, we will not experience it. We will not see it. We will not taste it. A world that is set against Christ, they will taste it. They will see it. But we won't. And so that's a lot to, that's just a huge amount to rejoice in. So rejoice. You have a lot to be grateful for. The gift of eternal life is ours because we believe in the Lord. The wrath of God has passed over us. And um, God's judgment has passed over us. Christ took it all. Took God's wrath and his judgment on the cross for us. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? A lot to be grateful for. If you don't know the Lord, if you haven't surrendered your heart and your life to him and asked him to forgive you of your sin, please do it today. The window of opportunity is closing and it's getting smaller. And a time will come when people will refuse to hear the truth and they'll turn their hearts and their minds and their ears against the truth. They won't the time's coming, they won't tolerate the truth anymore. So while the truth is being preached, ask Christ into your life. Do it today. Best decision you'll ever make. Why? You could get everything wrong in your life. You get that right, and you'll be in heaven with us. So ask Christ into your life now. Now, if you need help with that, go to brosteph.com. Go to the bottom of the page where it says how to ask Christ into your life. I've got some tools there for you. Great, a great video or two, short. It'll take you 10, 15 minutes to, to learn how to ask Jesus into your life. Go do that now, brosteph.com. Read the information. Let me know if you if you ask Christ into your life. I mean... Most of the people watching this in the replay probably know the Lord, but if you don't and you ask Christ into your life and you need help or you need encouragement, you can call me, you can write to me, email me, whatever, uh, and I'd be more than happy to be a mentor to you, to be a sponsor for you, and to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Okay? God bless you all. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has helped you, encouraged you, and gives you a little, a little ammo to share with uh, family and friends. Uh, like I said, I'll post all the articles uh, that I read today. I'll post that to the, the comment section. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you again on, on the next Prophecy Insights with Bro Steph. Love you. Bye for now.